Uh, certainly after watching that fiasco. The template, as oh, it will. Oh, forget about it. After now, watching right? that, it's sort of like, um, you know, it's like Mike Tyson in his prime. You see him knock out a guy in 93 seconds, and they say, you want to fight him next. Poor Spinks. Yeah, that was a tough <laughs> fight. For me. So the issue here, Mark, becomes, and we, we've gotten into this, and Charles, you can weigh in also, is what's the mindset of these bondholders? If the journal's right and the UAW agreement is in place and they've taken the, the cut there, the bondholders know, and this Charles makes a good point, they know what happened at Chrysler already. Yeah. So maybe at Chrysler you're thinking, oh, they won't go through with this. At GM, they know. So will they be more likely to take some sort of deal, uh, as bad as it I, might be? I, I think right now they think that they're being, we talked about it earlier, they think that they're being treated unfairly. I think they equate the current offer on the table as about four cents on the dollar, and they think they can do better in bankruptcy. The critical argument here is going to be, I think they're going into bankruptcy. I think what's going to happen is uh, the government, the task force, is going to uh, assist GM in lining up as many key constituencies and as many deals as possible. I think uh, I saw this morning that they actually haven't even started negotiating with the secured lenders, which they're going to do. They're not going to try mm -hmm. to haircut the amount of outstanding debt. They're just going to ask for longer payment terms. But they're going to set everything up so that they can do a quote-unquote quick rinse in bankruptcy. They're right. going to essentially make the argument. Uh, to the bankruptcy court that the bondholders are in fact being treated fairly uh, and that the only way to save this company is a, an expedited sale of the business under the melting ice cube theory that the longer the company stays in the bankruptcy, the less likely it will be a viable entity going forward. Right, okay. So now, all right, let's take that as, um, hypothetically at least, Charles, as something that's going to happen. So say GM does, as Mark says, file for bankruptcy protection. Now there's another question that's been raised, and GM actually raised in its SEC filing. They come out of bankruptcy. Are they better off having more government involvement, probably a more, a more than a 50 percent stake, as opposed to a Ford that has less? Some people say, well, you know, GM has all this government help. They'll be better off. Others say, and GM kind of alluded to this, the G, with the government telling them how to do their business, right. make smaller cars, make fuel efficient right. vehicles, they might be worse off. Well, the government's going to tell them how to run their business anyway, but at least they will have a little bit more autonomy if they were running it themselves. You know, Lee Iacocca, when he took the money from the government, he said the worst part about it was whenever the government had suggestions for him. Right. He said that was like the worst part about it. That slowed him up more than anything else. He actually said Chrysler could have paid the government back sooner <laughs> if it weren't for any of the meddling that they made. Well, and so that's the thing no we've all been trying to figure out, and I haven't heard a good answer to this yet. Why why, in a, in a business where you're trying to save costs, the whole point here is that their cost structure is out of whack, are you pushing these companies to make comp cars that cost more? Not only are they they're doing that, but listen, look at these cafe standards that they're saying that they're going to make these car companies, uh, for them, for car companies in America to, to achieve some of the cafe standards that are set out there, particularly right. in well, California now, put, moving up their dates, you know, it's 2020 for the nation, California's moved their date up. Just to retrofit these factories will cost so cost many so much billions money. of dollars. I mean, it's mind-boggling. And it's a political argument, Mark. But do you yeah. understand? And what about from a business position? Does it make any sense to go down that road? Uh, I, I think at the end of the day, I, I don't think GM has any choice here. No, they don't. Okay, it, without government funding today, they're on life support. Without government funding, they're out of business. They, they're out of business. Yeah, they have no choice. So they're going to have to. Uh, they're ha going to have to have government involvement. But the fact that matters, the government is not going to run this company to make money. It's going to run this company based on their agenda, their political agenda, which yeah. is a green agenda, money is like last on the list of things they want to do. Which brings we up longer term, are we in more trouble, you know, a few years from now? Well, I think what's going to have to happen is you got to get this company off of life support. You got right. to get it in a position where it can start building cars, it can close factories, it, it, it can start really reshaping its balance sheet so it has a manageable capital structure to operate. It's got to gain some market share back. And over time, it's got to wean itself right. off. But of Mark, the now. dirty little secret though is yeah. that they're going to be on life support or the taxpayer don't dole for many, 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 years, many years in the future. Probably I don't disagree with, with that. With no other, as Mark says, probably no other choice but to do there, that there is a lot no of business. Problem. All right, guys, Mark, we have to run. Charles and Mark, thanks very much. Ashley, back over to you. Thank you. Well, you know what? Maybe we did come a little bit too far too fast. The market was clearly oversold. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, up nicely from its lows uh, in March. And now I think people are starting to look at the fundamental data. Where really are we and what drives this market higher? None of it's good. I mean, not uh, good. None of it's good. Uh, you saw what Ashley j just reported on. Um, the European zone uh, has had four uh, consecutive quarters of negative growth, uh, mm -hmm. and it does not look particularly good. If you look at the global trade figures, uh, down significantly. So the question is, where do we go from here, and what yeah. drives this economy uh, further? What drives this, these markets further? What are you looking at, Charles? Well, uh, you know, interesting. Last night, some news came out on a small biotech company called Zoma. Okay. And the reason I think it's entering, in, interesting, the stock was up like 60% in the aftermarket. It's, uh, it closed at 85 cents, so it hit a buck 40 buck 15 in the market. You look at where this stock was. It used to be a $35 stock. This was a hot biotech at one point. But the main Years point back, is right? the company has raised close to a billion dollars. They've never been profitable. 
and they finally had some good news last night. That's the free market. We keep talking about not letting things fail. There's a lot of money out there, and if there's a good idea, this company, over 20 years, still able to raise a billion dollars to pursue several different business models. If we would just let things fail, settle down, and then regrow, I think that's nature. If you look at the way nature is, things die and then they're reborn, we need to let capitalism be the same way. And that's what I'm worried about, is that we won't let, we won't let things fail. The, the government's crowding out private inter companies for, for capital. So you think it's going to make things, uh, the, the slowdown as such as it is, is going to be much longer because of that, is I your think, point? you know, to our point with General Motors earlier, you know, at the end of the day, I bet you there are people within General Motors right now, if they were set free on their own, the company dissolved, they would go and create a car company that would be a household name within 10 years, five years, and maybe produce the cars we want to produce. Well, that's interesting. We could talk about that. What do you think, Ashley? Because, you know, obviously, the, and there is, there is some things to be said about, you know, companies coming from overseas is also in taking the place of a, of a General Motors and employing American workers. I mean, that, that the, the process will work itself out. Yeah, it will. And just to, you know, to bring on a kind of uh, add to Charles' thoughts, you know, sometimes the best cure for a recession is a recession. You know, you just have to work through it, and those that survive do, will do well because right. the strongest survive, and those that don't. And we haven't really seen that because not always has the uh, the free capital market has been allowed to work here. And you're right; it could actually extend the economic downturn. Your last word, Mark, on that? Uh, Ashley's uh, very. He's he's right. It could very well could. I think. The question about the systemic risk versus, you know, doing nothing and waiting, uh, we'll see. We'll have an interesting history lesson here when we look at the yes, we will. 10 years from now. Well, that's the thing is that this won't be, we don't really know now, but, we you know, know, 10, 20 years from now, when Charles writes his book about it. We'll <laughs> read it. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, that does it for Fox Business Morning. You know, this show, Charles is going to have a great new look on Monday. That's a tease. Where do you oh, see it? Boy. Where do you see that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> but yes, stay calm. Stay okay. right. I think they'll leak it over the weekend. Stay, wow. no. Well, right.